Hey there, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna break down the differences between the Ford AOD and 4R70W. And then I'll discuss um, performance modifications involving swapping 4R70W parts into an AOD to beef up your AOD transmission. So um, I'll also interject locations or, or you know portions of the case that are different between the AOD and the AODE. Uh, the AODE or electronic version of that transmission wasn't in production for very long. So anyway, uh, I have all the parts uh, that are internal in the case on this bench and then I have the two cases themselves along with the pans and valve bodies on the other bench. So we're going to start with all the case internals uh, and then we'll kind of just work our way from the rear of the case to the front of the case, you know, basically left to right. And then I'll wrap up with the, uh, um, the actual cases themselves and discuss a little bit about the valve bodies. But there's a lot of parts from the 4R70Ws that you can swap into an AOD and make work. And these parts would, you know, to varying degrees, depending on what part we're talking about, would greatly improve and enhance the strength and torque handling capacity of that transmission. And at the same time, just improve the driver experience overall. But depending on how deep into the, you know, uh, rabbit hole you want to go with this, uh, there are some complexities and some nuance, as well as some things you need to be aware of. So... What I'll do is I'll reposition the camera, we'll get close to the bench. Like I said, we'll start on the left side and work our way uh, to the right and I'll cover all of the differences and then as we go through, discuss options for swaps of the 4R70 stuff into the AOD. All right, the first thing I'll focus on is the output shaft. Okay, this is the one thing that you're not going to swap between the two transmissions for obvious reasons. Um, just visually speaking, um, there's nothing about the output shafts that are the same beyond the direct clutch feed. So everything from here forward is largely the same. Everything from here on back is not, okay? Um, the reasons for that are obvious. The AOD is a mechanically governed transmission, whereas the 4R70W is controlled electronically, and same with the AODE. So output shaft wise, AOD has to stay with the AOD and the 4 r 70 has to stay with the 4R70, okay? Um, the case bearings are different as well. So for the AOD, you have an open style bearing with exposed uh, you know, little needle rollers, whereas in the 4R70W, they made it an enclosed bearing completely. So it sits in the back of the case and goes like that, okay? Whereas this bearing goes like that on the AOD transmission, okay? So we'll segue into the gear train itself. The AOD has a 72 tooth ring gear, whereas the 4R70 has 88 teeth. And that's owing to the fact that the gear ratios between the AOD and the 4R70W are completely different for first and second gear, okay? The uh, AOD has something like a 2.4 first gear and like a 1.45 for second gear, the 4R70 has a much deeper ratio at 2.84 and 1.54 or 1.55, somewhere in there. And then you have your direct drive, which is one to one, obviously. And then overdrive is 0.67 for the AOD and uh, 0.70 for the 4R70. So the loss of, uh, you know, I guess what would be 30 basis points or, you know, 3% uh, in terms of overdrive between the AOD and the 4R70 is largely immaterial. I mean, you may notice it, but more than likely you won't. You might, might notice a little bit of gas mileage improvement if you do a ton of highway driving um, between the two, if you decided to swap the gear trains, but more than likely it wouldn't be a material difference, not one you'd care about. So these flanges here or output uh you know output housings they're not interchangeable individually so you can't stick the aod flange into the um ring gear basket for the 470w and vice versa um you can spline either one of these onto the, either the aod or the 470 i mean it'll physically mate and that is what allows you to retro swap the entire gear set from the 4R70 into the AOD. If you couldn't do that, then we wouldn't be having most of this conversation, or you know, it would be entirely trivial, uh, you know, just FYI. But you know, we want to make this video actionable for you, and for those that are looking to beef up their AODs, you know, we want to give you some information that you can act on. So, 
All right, I'm going to move the camera on down and we'll discuss the direct drums. All right, the direct drum went through somewhat of an evolutionary uh, kind of journey, if you will, from the earliest days of the AOD to the 4R75W. So the first designed drum is going to be cast iron, just like this, okay? It was designed to hold five frictions, five steels, and um, it accepted a uh, clutch hub, a spacer, and a bearing here on the front, and then it had a bearing on the, you know, the outboard side of it. Okay, um, this drum evolved a little bit, so they went away from the cast design, you know, the cast iron, and they moved to a uh, corrugated metal or sheet steel style drum, and that is what we have uh, here with this direct drive shaft sticking out of it. So, how you can tell an AOD drum from a 4R70 drum is simply by looking at the spline pattern as far as where the splines terminate on the inside of the shaft here, okay? All the AODs, they stop at about maybe, I don't know, what is this, a little less than a quarter of an inch from the top. Whereas the 4R70s, the splines go pretty much all the way to the top. Okay, the pistons, to my knowledge, didn't change too much, but uh, there were a variety of different snap rings, four in total for the A uh, AOD that are selective and four for the 4R70W. Okay, there's also different thicknesses of friction. So we've got a couple different thicknesses of friction here on the bench. Um, you can fit six frictions and uh, six steels in this cast iron drum because, um, I mean, I know that for a fact because that's what I have here. Now, these steels are used. We obviously would not use them in a build, but they're there for demonstration. So, the, let me take the snap ring out. We'll show you. So, the teeth, you know, the, um, the outer teeth that you're going to see on the steels and on the backing plate for this first design drum are different than on the second design drum. All right, the uh, the frictions and steels that would go into the second design drum, or I should say steels, the steels and the uh, backing plate that would go into the second design drum can swap between the AOD and the 4R70W, but the uh, backing plate and the steels for the first design drum are not interchangeable. All right, so these frictions, which are used, are 71 thousandths thick. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so this is one possible stack up to increase the strength handling and, you know, general reliance and durability of this clutch. Uh, adding one friction and one steel increases its durability by 20%. So many hands make light work. And if you can, wherever possible, for these transmissions in the direct clutch, beef it up with additional frictions and steels, you definitely want to do so. So this, this backing plate's 218 thousandths thick. All right, and as I mentioned, the uh, snap ring is selective. So this one is 77 thousandths thick. Now, in the aftermarket, Alto makes a power pack for these units. And it's, you know, one part number, and they give you a set of frictions and steels and a backing plate. And there's different thicknesses of steel plates in there that you can mix and match to arrive at the recommended clearance. Now, they tell you to run the clearance rather tight. In that clutch, I think that the max spec is 35 thousandths. So um, I don't, you know, I don't build these all the time like I do 4L60E. So if it sounds like I'm not sure, it's because I'm not 100% sure. But I mean, I'm building them enough that I'm familiar with them. And I always run the max pack or the, the power pack rather when I do build an AOD. All right, so here are some other examples of second design steels. Now this is gonna be a backing plate noticeably thicker and 
This is going to be, looks like 377 thousandths thick. And that's compared to the one in the 4R70. And that's going to be, looks like 218 thousandths thick. So just like that other one over there in that cast iron drum. Okay, a variety of different options as far as friction module for uh, this clutch. There's the standard, you know, tan style frictions. There's the high energies, which is what I like. Um, they make uh, uh, Alto Reds uh, and Colleen steels. So if you want to run those, those are also fine. But whatever you do um, for any AOD, it doesn't even matter what the application is. Don't run the standard five friction, five steel setup. It's just, it, it handicaps the clutch and you don't want to do that. All right, so the spacer configuration changed a little bit as well. Um, AODs had this style spacer and a bearing. The bearing sits like this, spacer goes underneath. And then the 4R70s move to this kind of spacer here with an inset or a recess. And then the bearing sits like this. And then as far as the outboard bearing, you know, on the back of the drum, they move to a closed style Torrington bearing. All right, the stub shaft replaced the direct drive shaft because in the 4R70s and AODEs, they went back to a traditional converter clutch, um, you know, lockup apply strategy and design. The AODs don't really have traditional lockup per se. They have the coupling that occurs mechanically between the torque converter and this long through shaft. And where this design is weak is specifically at the splines. So if you notice here, okay, that's a fair amount of play. It's a fair amount of play between the male splines on the through shaft and the female splines here in the drum. And this will crack in this area, the splines will strip, and then you'll be neutral in third gear. When this first came in, I you know thought of that as a possibility, although um, the shop did tell me that it, I think it, actually worked in third gear for a very short period of time. I mean, th you know, if you watch that video, you'll, you know, you'll see what the ultimate problem was, but ultimately, um, this shaft is a major weak point. You know, this design in general, the shaft itself is fairly strong. It's those splines that like to strip and where the drum will crack. So when you stick it here in this cast iron drum, All right, that is much more, much more solid, much more robust, okay? Nowhere near the amount of play. So I'm probably gonna run this cast iron drum in the build. This is gonna be a cruiser. It's not gonna see, you know, any real high RPMs, not a lot of horsepower. It's a stock 302 and a 67 Mustang. The 4R70 is a junkyard core that came out of a 02 or 03 Expedition. Um, I have to look at the casting numbers. In fact, we'll see them when we look at the cases later. But point being is that uh, it was a post-98, which means that if you're looking for 4R70 cores, you want to stick to 98 and up because that's when they started installing the mechanical diode-style intermediate one-way clutch assemblies. All right, uh, the hubs are going to be the same. Okay. You notice the lubrication holes. They're largely the same. One thing I haven't done was count them. But by eye right at the moment, I don't see a major difference between the number of holes in each one of these drums. So again, AOD stuff is on the left and 4R70 stuff is on the right. Okay, uh, let's move a little bit further down toward the right and discuss the planets, the sun gears, center supports, and sun shells. If you're gonna do a gear swap of the 4R70 gear set into your AOD, you need to swap everything. And when I say everything, I mean literally everything other than the stub shaft. So everything you see here from the sun shell to the ring gear and the associated flange, the direct drum, and all the bearings have to go over. Now, there are companies out there that will sell to you 
um, entire gear sets out of a 4R70W and you can install those. Now from what I've seen of the prices, <laughs> you know, you really don't want to spend any kind of money on, on these things because they're charging anywhere from four to six hundred bucks. And I think one case I saw like eight hundred dollars for what is it, basically a stock 4R70 gear set. You can go to the junkyard, pull the transmission out yourself, or even get lucky and have one just sitting around laying there on the ground. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I go to the uh, you know junkyards around here and there's just at least one of these transmissions complete just sitting there on the ground. Um, they're as common as house flies. So, like I said, you wanna look for the 98 and up, but otherwise just harvest the gear parts or just simply buy the whole core because there are other things that you may want to install into your AOD beyond just the gear train, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But let me first go over the planets and the uh, rear sun gears. So I haven't done a tooth count. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just lazy. But they are dramatically different between uh, these two gears, these two uh, Ravino style planetary carriers. All right, the only thing that's the same is the diameter here on the band surface. The AOD. Um, pinion gears are not as wide as those on the 4R70W. Okay, now the AODEs had the same gear sets, except for the trucks, vans, Thunderbirds of certain submodels, and Lincolns. I think the Mark 8s. They got this deeper gear ratio and updated gear sets right out of the gate in like '92 or '93. In 1996. All four R70Ws, excuse me, I was about to say L, all four R70Ws received the updated gear set. So it was across the board. But between 91 late to 95, only certain um, models and submodels received these updated gear sets. So you just want to be aware of that. That's why I tell you, just stick to 98 and up and you'll be good as far as cores. All right, so. Here is the AOD pinion gears. And then here's the 4R70s. Okay, you can immediately see the difference. I mean, the pinions that you see on the, the right-hand side, right here, are noticeably wider. Okay, that necessitated a design change for the sun gear. So in addition to the different uh, tooth counts, the sun gears in the AOD were wider than those in the 4R70. Noticeably wider. So does that compromise or make weak this gear set? Not at all. Sun gear doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as it's there, it's functioning. It's size relative to say, you know, um, a different sun gear. You know, this being a little bit smaller, this being a little bit wider, does not matter at all. Because the sun gear is, I don't want to say it's static, because that's not true either, but it's at the center. It's not seeing all the stresses that the planetary gears are going to see, relatively speaking. So, if you're going to beef up uh, a gear set, you want to beef up the size of the planets, the size of the pinion gears. And that's what Ford did. Alright, same with the sun shells. Now look at the relationship between the height of the AOD shell and the height of the 4R70 shell. Okay, the 4R70 shell is not as tall. It's also crenulated a little bit. Alright, you can look at the gears. These bearings are pretty much the same. I mean, if there are differences, I don't, you know, it's not immediately apparent what they are. AOD, 4R70. Okay, the uh, center supports are also a little different. So, like I said with the gear swap, you gotta bring the center support as well. Now the snap rings are gonna be the same. Up until the introduction of the 4R75, when they changed one of these ends and it's, it just terminates like this. But, I mean, snap rings are snap rings. All right, um, the low roller assembly is the same between these two gear sets as far as I know. 
I'm going to take it out of here and we could stick it right in here. And we could take it back out of here and put it back in here. Okay, um, that's gear sets. Like I said, uh, I would I would recommend, unless you just have no access to junkyards and cores and whatever, you know, I'd recommend you not spend all the money that you're going to spend on a prepackaged gear set kit online uh, when you can go and harvest all the parts you need from a rebuildable core that might cost you maybe 150 to 250 bucks. All right, we're going to move on down and I'll focus on the four drums and then we'll finish up with the reverse input drum, the bands, the different type of one-way intermediate clutch assemblies and the pumps. Not a lot to say about the pumps in general, but um, I'll talk a little bit about them when we get there. And then I'll go ahead and move into the cases and valve bodies and such. Okay, for your forward clutch, not a whole lot has changed between the two transmissions. I mean, there's some cosmetic changes or, you know, design changes to the backing plates and, and, and things of that nature. Um, this particular AOD has five frictions, five steels that came out of it. And the 4R70 also has five frictions, five steels. And both of them contain like a cushion plate or, you know, a wave plate or softening plate. It's the AODs, it's the steel plates, Okay, the return spring and snap ring and all that are largely the same. Here's the 4R70 steels. Okay, this was a good core. Um, I tore this down in the junkyard while I was there. Um, I always do that. If I'm buying a junkyard core, I'm not just buying it and not tearing it down. I want to make sure that there's no massive hard part damage, you know, stuff grenaded and whatnot. I want to, I want to know that it, every part is usable. Um, or at least most every part, I mean, you know, minor stuff I don't care about, but this core uh, came out of a, um, uh, a wrecked expedition, like I said, either 2002, 2003, and if you're going to look for a junkyard core for either purposes of rebuild or doing a swap, you know, component swap or service pack swap like I'm describing here, or for a replacement transmission that, you know, you want to actually install as is and hope it runs, your best bet is to buy one from, you know, pull it from a wrecked vehicle because more than likely the transmission was perfectly fine at the time the accident occurred. And so it's more than likely to be perfectly fine, um, you know, when you run it. Now, you want to do exercise a little bit of caution because if a vehicle is wrecked in a certain way and the drive line gets tweaked, like say a really, really bad rear end accident, then that could actually damage the transmission. So. You always want to inspect the stuff, uh, spin the shafts, make sure nothing's bound up, make sure the case doesn't have any major problems with it, you know, it's not cracked in the back or something like that, not cracked at the bell housing. Um, you know, pop the pan off, make sure there's no metal in it, you know, and again, here I'm talking to people that are not going to just disassemble the whole transmission to look at it, you know, maybe because you're not a transmission builder or you just don't have the time or maybe your salvage yard doesn't allow you to do that. You know, those are some basic checks you can run and things you can do to avoid buying, you know, a, you know, something that's not going to do anything for you. Okay, so we'll look at the hubs real quick. This is the AOD hub. You have your bearing. Note the size of the lube holes, and then we compare them to those in the 4R70. Okay, big difference over here. And then make note of the pistons. Four R seventy has a different piston physically. Four seventy AOD. And then the drums themselves, this is going to be cast iron. The other one's going to be your corrugated metal style. Sorry about that. The battery literally died as I was about to show you these drums. So uh, let me try that again. All right, so here's the AOD drum. And here you have your clutch basket. Okay, this is going to be the cast iron variety. All right, it's pressed in. Notice 
it's hollow obviously so you can fit your direct drive shaft and then here is the 4R70 okay again same deal pressed in but you have ceiling rings down here owing to the fact that this use uses a traditional TCC lockup apply strategy so uh, the shafts themselves are obviously not interchangeable however you can install the drum into the AOD by simply pressing out the shafts and you know exchanging them so you just stick this shaft into this drum and you can run it okay and you want you can run that hub so we looked at frictions they're largely the same no different okay um, what else about the forward drum anything I don't think so. If there is, I'll annotate. I feel like there's something else I want to discuss, some particular aspect about them, but it's not coming to mind. So, reverse input. So, the reverse input drum underwent a complete and total design change um, between the AOD and the 4R70W. Um, one of the main weak points of the AOD transmission when it comes to performance applications and to some extent heavy duty working type vehicles is the overdrive band. The overdrive band is an inch and a half wide. All right, this was corrected and addressed with the AOD, uh, excuse me, the 4R70W with your two inch wide band and much larger um, band surface. So if you wanna do like a cost effective, you know, best bang for your uh, buck type retro swap upgrade of components retroing a 98 nup 4R70 drum into your AOD is going to be that best bang for your buck thing you could do okay um, minimal complexity uh, in terms of level of effort I mean all you're doing is swapping the drum along with all the constituent parts and installing the two inch wide band and then, like I said if you're you know um, working with a performance application or you know some sort of heavy duty type deal off-road whatever just instead of using a stock band you would use a heavy duty band now you can buy heavy duty bands for the one and a half inch traditional style AOD um, you know band and reverse input drum design but it's not going to be as strong as the two inch band as common sense that said if you're working with an AOD and it's a largely factory stock or mild build a heavy duty band of the one and a half inch variety would be fine. You can further augment that with an improved servo. So between the band servo, which most of these had the B servos and you know they are what they are, um, you can upgrade to the A servos, which the more performance oriented vehicles had, like the Super Coupe and such, uh, or you can just buy an aftermarket billet servo, which is going to be better than any of them, and you'll be set. All right, so with that said, let's talk about the one-way assemblies. So here is the AOD's one-way intermediate roller. Okay, basic deal. I think this has seven elements. I mean, again, this is another area of weakness for this transmission. Um, seven element rollers on your intermediate clutch for high performance, it, you know, it, it can get sketchy after about 350 to 400 horsepower and or 5,000 plus RPMs on a fairly frequent basis. Okay. Um, very early AODs, you know, I don't know exactly when they um, changed, but they took a thrust washer at this location here on the drum stator. So three tabs and you got three little cutouts. And that just goes there. Okay, every single AOD I've done has a bearing. And obviously the 4R70s also have bearings. All right, both use the Belleville style return plate with the wavy snap ring and the, um, the seat for the piston. I don't ever reuse these, they can crack. You don't know what the history of the transmission is, or even if you do. I mean, again, we're talking about units that are, you know, 40 plus years old. I would always replace this on an overhaul. Okay. Um, 
both the forward drum and the reverse input drum, the snap rings for the clutch that's, you know, the clutches themselves are selective. This is a 76 dial snap ring, as is that. Um, what I've seen in the, you know, relatively limited amount of units I've done uh, in this family of transmissions, uh, there are certain selective values for each of these selective elements, the snap rings, the selective um, front steel and the intermediate, and the uh, thrust washer for the pump that seem to be more prevalent, markedly so, than the other options that were available from the factory. So here I'm going to just engage in some guesswork, but my guess is that all of these parts were largely designed to take... Um, you know, snap rings or, um, you know, that selective uh, steel and or thrust washer of a certain dimension to be within spec. And that dimension corresponds to what you will normally see when you disassemble these. So the 76,000s um, reverse input snap ring, the number three thrust washer for the pump, uh, the direct drum usually is fitted with you know, an 80 or 76 to 80,000 snap ring. That's what I see. Like I said, I haven't done a ton of these like I have with the 4L60Es, uh, the GM equivalent, but um, all the ones that I have done, the most common theme, you know, in terms of selectives is it, it, it appears to that all the same values are present for each of the selective components. So that's just an observation. You know, take it for what, you know, it's worth or for what you will. All right, so here is the um, AOD's um, apply and backing plate and steels. Four frictions, three steels in the AOD. For R, you have three steels, excuse me, three frictions, two flat steels, and a uh, apply and backing plate. So, here are the differences, AOD 470, okay, much thicker backing plate. Ply plates are largely the same dimensionally, the width of the teeth are different, the count of the teeth are different, but otherwise the apply plates are very similar. Um, do you need four frictions in the reverse clutch? Probably not. Um, engineers of Ford probably realized, hey, we really don't need that extra clutch plate. It's just causing unnecessary drag. Let's get rid of it and thicken up the uh, backing plate and call it good. So here is the mechanical diode. All right, and as you can see, um, I mean, this core was virginal. In other words, no one's ever been inside of it, which is good. Um, these snap rings are a point of weakness as well. You want to replace these with either the Sonics or the Superior Tech Kit. And it's a, you know, both of them are spiral lock rings. And the Superior Tech um, Kit has a flange that you basically collapse in different spots to retain the spiral lock ring. So it's like a double retention system. Between the two of them, that's the... Um, the one I like to use in the teardown video, I mistakenly thought it was the Sonics or called it the Sonics. Uh, the Sonics ring is also good. It's just a spiral lock ring, but there's no housing or there's no retainer uh, that comes with it to my knowledge. But this is the diode. So if you're not sure what year your um, 4R70 is and you want to be certain that it has a mechanical diode equipped reverse input drum. All you need to do is spin the input shaft. You spin that shaft, you'll hear this. Okay, it's unmistakable. If you don't hear it, then either the diode is bad or you're, you know, handling a um, older pre-1998 for our 70W. So if you're going to buy a core, buy one with the mechanical diode. That's going to be your best bet. Okay, not a whole lot to say about the pumps. The pumps are not interchangeable. One is entirely cast iron. Uh, the other one uses a cast stator with an aluminum pump body. Uh, that is the 4R70 pump that's aluminum. And the AOD pump is cast iron. Now, 
the uh, intermediate clutch stack up changed. However, you can retro the 4R70 stack up, which has more clutches for frictions for steels into your AOD. Okay? As long as it fits, it ships. The main thing when it comes to the intermediate clutch is that you get that clearance where it needs to be. And however you need to do that, you know, you can do it. Okay, the clutch plates, the friction discs are selective in the 4R70W. Okay, in the AOD, they're not. So here you're gonna have your selective steel, which can be identified with a number two. And like I said, every single one of these I've built, number two is what's um, in the case. Uh, but there's about, there's three of these. I've never seen a number one or a number three, or maybe it's an unmarked one. I mean, that's how little I know about it. I have no idea. So, you know, if you guys that do these all the time and you've done them by the gross, you know, hundreds and such, maybe thousands, you know, maybe you've seen these um, where you have a different selective here. But you can beef up the intermediate clutch using the 4R70 clutch stack up. And same with the washers. I mean, I always see number three washers. And I think there's five different, um, five different colors, five different thicknesses of washer. The aftermarket has kits. So if you're new to these transmissions, I would recommend you buy a kit along with all your, you know, rebuild stuff. So that in the event, you know, you have a problem with end play, you're either too tight or too loose, you can just swap in one of those other washers and you're good to go. All right, um, talked about the servos a little bit. I mean, they're not really, you can't retro a 4 70 servo into an AOD, but here is the B servo. And that's the only servo I've personally ever seen. All the AODs I've done, I've always had the B servos. For factory applications, purely stock, they're fine. Um, this application that I'm building this AOD transmission for will be fine with a uh, B servo and a, uh, a heavy duty band. And we're also gonna install Transgo shift kit, so that'll help out as well. But here's the uh, 4R70 overdrive servo. Okay, a little bit different. They went to a bonded um, steel and rubber piston. Um, you can remove the, uh, the pins as well. The reverse servos haven't changed. They're largely the same. So here's two brand new servos. You can put these in whatever AOD family of transmission you're working on. This one has two grooves. This one has three grooves. The more grooves, the longer the pin. I mean, this is going to be a really, really hackneyed way of trying to show this, but this pin is not as long as this pin. All right, so let me recap uh, the case components. Stuff you can retro include the reverse input drum and it's uh, one way clutch assembly, mechanical diode is the way to go. The forward clutch drum itself will retro, but obviously not the shaft. And then your entire gear set, all the bearings, the direct clutch drum, uh, you will not carry over the stub shaft for obvious reasons. And then the output shafts are not interchangeable. All right, let me uh, take you over to the other bench where we have the cases, the pans, and the valve bodies. And I'll discuss a little bit about each, and then we'll kind of wrap up. Okay, um, here we have the two cases. The AOD is on the left. That's um, painted kind of faded black. And the 4R70W case is on the right. And you have their two respective pans in front. And then you have the 4R70 pan gasket that's reusable. So that's this molded steel and rubber type gasket. Unfortunately, you cannot retro this gasket onto the AOD. 
Okay, at first glance, it looks like you could. I mean, they're shaped exactly the same. They appear to be of the same dimension and the bolt pattern looks to be exactly the same. But unfortunately it's not. So here it is on the 4R70. Now I'll go ahead and put it on the AOD and let's see if you can spot the problem. See it yet? It's gonna be right here in the lower left. This bolt is displaced by about roughly an inch relative to this bolt hole location. Um, I have never drilled and tapped one of these cases to adapt it to take this gasket. So again, for those of you that are watching that are a lot more knowledgeable than I am on these transmissions, maybe you could, I don't know. Maybe it's an option, but as is, Unfortunately, they're not interchangeable. So with this, you're stuck with either an aftermarket specialized gasket, and I don't know if one exists, or the standard composite gasket. Whatever you do, do not run cork. All right, other than that, the, uh, the physical changes should be obvious, right? Uh, this this uh, case is noticeably taller, and then the area in here on the 4R70W, you have your uh, bore provision for the electronic pressure control solenoid that doesn't exist for the AOD. The worm tracks are completely different in this general area. Um, you know, you just have a completely different unit here. Uh, they look superficially like they're the same, but they're they're really not. It's a it's a wholly different transmission, even more so um, than the 700R4 uh, and the 4L60E. I would say just purely from case changes. Um, the pans are different. The 4R70's got that kind of pyramidal shape inverted cavity there at the base of the pan. The AODs do not have that. And of course the AODs take a governor and the 4R70s are fully electronically controlled. So you have a you know set of solenoids, a conductor strip, a case connector, and so forth. Um, and that brings me to the case connector. So the case connectors on the 4R70Ws, uh, the later, um, I wanna say 98 and up, uh, they went from a white connector to a black connector. So that's another visual cue to help you identify a late case. So um, if you're looking for a 4R70 either to swap or you know as a whole or to uh, harvest for hard parts and you want that mechanical diode, um, look for something with a black connector in it and then like I said, spin the input shaft because you'll hear that diode. I mean, it'll be unmistakable. So these two valve bodies couldn't be more different from each other. I mean, they look only vaguely similar. They're shaped in a, in a similar kind of manner, but <laughs> obviously they're not interchangeable between the two transmissions. So the AOD's valve body um, has three different versions. And within those versions, there's, I think, a few different iterations of spacer plates. So it's important to make sure that your, um, you know, your valve body is matched with your transmission. And the easiest way to tell that is by simply looking at the uh, casting identification number that's going to be in this location here. I'm not going to pick this up. I'll take a picture of it and flash it on the screen. But the uh, first two characters in the codification are E9. That tells you it's an 89 valve body, which means it'll be compatible with your 89 AOD, all other things equal. All right. Um, now, there's one important aspect of the... 4R70 retro gear swap that you need to know when it comes to the valve body and the governor. And that is the shift points are going to be out of whack with the new gear set installed. This valve body and that governor were calibrated with the understanding that first gear would be like 2.40, 2.45, you know, somewhere in there, not 2.84 or 2.85. So when you go to install your gear set, there's things you need to do to the valve body, and that's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but there's things you need to do to both the valve body and to the governor to make sure that you're shifting calibration. In other words, the brain, and I guess if you want to call the governor the spinal cord of the transmission, are aligned with and working um, in, you know, hand to glove with the skeletal system, which is your gears, your shafts, drums, and all that stuff. So. That's what makes that swap somewhat complex.
And so if you're doing something all out race, you're doing something street strip or really heavy duty, it's definitely worth doing it. You just have to know all the things you need to know to make it happen. That's it. I mean, that's really like anything else. That's all there is to it. All right, so the 4R70, you have your shift solenoids here, your TCC solenoid. Um, the EPC is separate that, like I pointed out, goes into the case. And, you know, there is a conductor strip, which is basically a solid wiring harness that plugs into these little terminals here for each of these electronic components um, that provide power to all of these solenoids on the 4R70's valve body. Okay, there's a lot of valves and a lot going on in the AOD. Um, like if you looked at the Transgo's shift kit instructions, I mean, they're pretty extensive for just the basic kit because there's so many things that are, you know, um, to be installed. Uh, they did a lot of streamlining here and simplification with the 4R70 valve bodies because of the introduction of electronic command and control. But the AOD valve body, you take a little while to get it all apart make sure everything's good and then put it back together. So set aside some time to go through that valve body. And I'll do that in a separate video. I'll have part one, which will be disassembly and part two, which will be assembly. So just look for that on the channel. Um, I think I've said everything I want to say overall uh, about all these components and just kind of showing you um, all the differences and some of the, um, you know, retro mod swap and you know, performance enhancement possibilities that are available for you working on an AOD um, that you can leverage a 4R70W for. And the same is true as a 4R75. You have a 4R75 gear set that, that swap right over to. It's the same gear set. All right. Um, that does it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, and if, you know, obviously go ahead and leave them below. If there's anything else about these transmissions that you would like to see more of, um, anything that you would like me to focus on in particular, or a topic or subject matter, you know, again, leave it in the comments and I'll do what I can to prioritize it. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate your time um, and enjoy the rest of your day or evening. We'll see you on the next video.